Oh, uh, what about the sales tax bill? I don't know. I don't think it's on our agenda, but what do you see happening with that? Ryan or, or Phil? Yeah, what I've been hearing is that there's a lot of mixed um, emotions about it, that it might be tied up into one of those big one. It's being dubbed the sales tax, which I don't think anybody has the political um it, they don't want to move bills that are called sales tax in Oregon. And so uh, they, there's conversations already if that move forward of people trying to refer that back to the ballot. Um, but at the same time, because it's related to healthcare, I think it's charging, um, it's getting people riled up a little bit more as well. So um, I'm not seeing it move, but it's definitely within a committee that doesn't isn't subject to the deadlines at this point. I mean, I've been surprised at the people that have told me about it that are very aware of it and, and um, you know, people in our community that are like, oh my gosh. So, all right, so it, it doesn't have deadlines. All right, thank you. So Laura, is he on now? I'm here. Oh, good, thank you, Commissioner Chang. Um, so I don't know, Ryan, did you wanna say something to start off or um, are we gonna go with Bill Shores? Uh, sure, I can get us started. Um, so last night we hit something that is called the Chamber of Origin or, or the first part of the Chamber of Origin deadline. So just like in a long session, uh, we have first chamber deadlines and second chamber deadlines, and they both consist of two parts. So there's a posting deadline where bills have to be posted on an agenda and then uh, by last night. So by midnight last night, anything that was not posted on an agenda to move out of committee by the end of this week, Friday's the deadline for uh, bills that have to move out of committee. And that's the second part of the chamber of origin deadline. If you didn't get posted by last night, the bill's dead. If you didn't get, uh, if you don't get moved out of committee by Friday, your bill's dead. Uh, there are some exceptions to that always. You know, the presiding officers have the ability to introduce bills anytime they want through the rules committee. There are two uh, or three committees that uh, have a, um, on each side that have an exemption from the deadlines, revenue committee being one of them. And so uh, I did just run the numbers. I always like to talk, uh, to put things in context for people uh, to understand what we're dealing with down there. So with the start of the session, every legislator had two bills, that's 90, so 180 total. Uh, and then each of the committees had three bill introductions. So of the 25 committees, about another 75 on top of that, add budget bills into that. And you're looking at roughly 275 to 300 bills total for a six week session. Uh, so we were uh, thinking and hoping that, um, in many cases hoping, that uh, we'd see a big drop off after last night, the things that did not make it through the first uh, chamber posting deadline. But uh, what we saw, and I haven't made it through the House yet, but I have ran the numbers in the Senate, and out of the 100 bills that were introduced with Senate bills, uh, 70 of them have either already been moved out of committee or are still remaining on agendas to potentially move out of committee by the end of the week. Uh, so 30% of the bills have dropped off in the Senate, and 70% are still alive. So, Phil, that, that'll, that'll cover my general report for now. Thank you. All right. And so, commissioners, I was thinking, I do believe um, we have Senator Knope joining here in uh, probably 10 minutes. Um, although, if you folks just want, I know he's on a tight timeline today, too. So, um, do you just want me to start going through the look ahead calendar? And then when we see him pop on, just kind of freeze, pause, jump to him, and then come right back? Is that the best process for you folks? The very best. Thank you. All right. And I would just fill before you get rolling in that note that um, the report that the board has just includes recommended priority and position from departments and the board has not had a chance yet to um, weigh in on those recommendations and finalize the board's priority and position. So as we go through bills, I would just ask, um, it would be helpful for staff if the board can, um, where it's possible, let us know if you'd like to make an adjustment to the recommendation and we'll note those and lock those into the system and then moving forward as we do look aheads you'll know that you've you've reviewed staff's recommendations so just a quick housekeeping item there and if i could add on to what whitney just said um i believe on this look ahead calendar that includes them all 
um, in the future moving forward, once we have all of those priorities, we will only be putting priorities one, two, and threes on this uh, look ahead calendar. Right now, it looks very robust because one, it was a deadline week. And then two, um, once we just get those priorities set, then uh, fours and fives will drop off and we'll not include them anymore. So if I read off a bill and you folks know it's already four or five, just tell me and I will mark it right on my side and uh, we can just move on. So, perfect. All right. The first one might be one of those. Um, so I we had some public hearings and work sessions yesterday. Um, for the sake of time, I'm just moving forward with what's occurring today and uh, and looking forward. The first one was this morning, House Bill uh, 4027. Now, this one is on the list because it had a uh, clarification that prohibits or limits a local government's regulation authority. Um, it's specifically... Um, tied to non-residential alarm systems and battery battery charged fences. Um, so it might not be the top priority for <laughs> Oregonians right now, but it did have a public hearing. The only for, uh, people that showed up for that this morning at eight o'clock was two uh, in security firms. Um, and really they're not prohibiting it. They're just trying to say you can't use a battery of no more than 12 volts, um, regulations similar to that. Um, you can't prohibit height limits. Um, and again, it is just for non-residential alarm systems. There can be restrictions or ordinances passed at the local government level for the residential ones still, but they kept this very uh, centered on, for instance, industrial parks, things like that. Um, and commissioners, um, just a tag team here coming out of community development. Um, this is recommended as a priority four, so um, likely at least staff recommendation not to have a huge impact. All right, and just that did for, real quick, just for clarity. So, is that referring to electric fences? Is that the the key to this whole thing? Yeah, specifically, um, it is a, a battery charge electric fences, and then um, that they can't have a battery no more than 12 volts meets the energized characteristics from the in its uh, the International Electrical Technical Commission, the IEC. And so they set standards. They're trying to have a uniform standard. That's what some of the testimony was about. Um, and this would just keep. Um, and then also by not putting additional regulations on surrounded areas for non-electrical perimeter fences around it. So again, these are all being brought forward by that IEC. The uh, two companies that came forward and testified are members of that. And um, the conversation was, this keeps us consistent with other uh, states. Washington did something very similar in their last legislative session. So. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, all right, I'm going to move to the next one, which was a big conversation this morning. Um, this is the governor's workforce development bill that was heard in the Senate. Um, they, at the last minute, um, published a dash two amendment, which replaces the bill. Um, it expanded the definition of priority population. Um, this workforce bill, I believe um, you might have already, commissioners, you might have already heard from uh, Leah Horn, uh, the governor's uh, person for workforce and infrastructure now. She has been visiting with local governments, I believe at LOC and AOC about the per, uh, what they're intended for this bill and trying to get support for it. It was making large investments in workforce development through HEC. Um, it effectively sets up multiple um, grants, um, appropriates millions of dollars into those grants, but it allows, um, it, they can only be used or allocated from HEC for the priority population. The dash two um, is what replaced the bill. And the uh, big change in there is the definition of priority population now means uh, communities of color, women, low income communities, rural and frontier communities, veterans, people with disabilities, incarcerated or formerly incarcerated individuals, members of the nine recognized, uh, federally recognized tribes, and individuals that have been disproportionately experienced discrimination in employment. So they broadened it quite a bit. Um, it was uh, a narrower, um, but that was a, a good a part of the conversation this morning. And I, uh, I'm in the process of breaking this down by a couple people's requests of which each, uh, which each allocation and which grant programs are being set up in this. And specifically, if there's any details within the bill 
which I'm guessing there's not, um, that how is the process going to work to get these funds allocated into those communities? As of right now, they've been very high level and vague proposals of this grant for these uh, communities at this funding level, and then very um, limit, uh, very loose guidelines on what they want to achieve for that. I think a lot of the questions we're hearing is, how's it going to be implemented? Is there going to be a metric to make sure that these funds are distributed equally across these communities? Um, things like that. And uh, that was not spoken to quite um, this morning. So I am in the process of breaking down this bill into sections, if that's helpful for you folks. But it is one that's going to be hey, you're having another public hearing and possible work session later, um, either this week or, oh, actually, it's on, I believe it's the 14th. I can double check that and get that to you as well. Um, so it had its first one and it will continue to move forward. This is at the request of the governor's office. And so um, it is, uh, it's on its way. So I'm gonna pause there if there's any questions on that bill. And this is coming uh, with a staff recommendation of support too, out of health services. What's the bill number? Did you, I'm sure you start off at? Uh, 15, uh, 1545. And it will be the dash two or the A engrossed coming out of committee, um, no longer the original bill. All right. Are we confirming position? Is that what you're looking for, Whitney, for the three commissioners? It would be helpful. Um, and I think Tom Kuhn is off mute and can uh, provide some potentially additional context if you want to, Tom. Yes, hello, Tom Kuhn from Public Health. Uh, we are recommending a priority to support for this as we've been experiencing some really great difficulties in workforce recruitment mm -hmm. and just helping develop a public health and behavioral health workforce in the upcoming years is critical for us to get um, more applicants when we have positions posted to draw from a better pool of applicants and get the highest quality possible candidates we can get. Because often now we're lucky if we get maybe three candidates applying to positions that in the past we would have gotten over 20. So I think this is really uh, important going into the future. Uh, well, so, you know, I'm excited about, um, you know, the future, you know, workforce development, uh, for a generation, I see Senator Canope, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, for a generation, it's been, you know, go to college, go to college. And I think there's uh, ab absolutely that path available, but just like we've been talking about apprenticeships and all kinds of uh, work experience programs. So yeah, anything down these lines is, is gonna be uh, enthusiastically supported to get the next generation of employees on track. Thank you. Um Phil, did you want to then um, recognize Senator Knope? Yeah, absolutely. We will pause where we're at. And um, Senator Knope has joined. He is, uh, he obviously sir, has served as um, Deschutes County uh, Senator for a, a, a good portion of a uh, good time and um, happy to have him here. He's also now our Senate Republican leader. And so um, uh, we've, uh, as the board has requested, we've invited him to come and provide a legislative update um, just on things he's hearing, how he's feeling the tone of sessions going, and anything else that he feels um, uh, he would like to, to visit about. And so uh, that is it. He is, and I would just like to note too, his, uh, he and his office have been remarkably helpful as we have been trying to, um, not just this session and previous sessions, track down bills, see where things are going on behind the scenes um, in public. Um, as you folks know, the last couple sessions have not been normal with COVID, um, but having our, uh, our ability to reach out to the Senator and have him help navigate things when the public's not fully assess, uh, available to be in the building has been tremendously helpful. And so I guess we would just like to thank you, Senator, for that help. So a uh, quick introduction also. Uh, so this is our legislative meeting of Deschutes County. You can see there's department heads, all kinds of folks on here. You might know some, uh, maybe not, but this is kind of the administrative uh, leadership of Deschutes County taking uh, positions on the bills that are happening out there. So thanks for joining us, Senator. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Phil. And um, um, Commissioners Adair and Chang. Uh, it is an honor to be with you. I haven't been in a room with this many VIPs in uh, quite a while. 
I got all the department heads here. They look all excited to be on yet one more Zoom call with a uh, politician. I got great news though. I'm a statesman, not a politician. So we're all good there. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Chang for your letter on uh, the forestry bill. I got some great input. Uh, we got staff working to try to uh, include uh, those items uh, to the degree that we can in this bill. One of the issues with the short session, obviously, is uh, time is of the essence and things are moving very rapidly. Uh, but we're going to we're going to do our best because uh, I, I liked uh, a lot of what you had to say. So it's uh, super helpful. Uh, Commissioner DeBone, of course, thanks for stopping by. Was that yesterday? I lose track of time. Yeah, man, you're already back in Bend. That was yesterday. Yes. You got a you got a flying DeLorean that you bought with county money that you need to. No, no, up. no. I got up early and drove back this morning, though. OK, well, that's good. That's what I do, too. Yep. Uh, the uh, I could just tell you at 5 a.m. The police aren't on the road yet. So I'm just saying. Uh, so but take it easy. Uh, so. I mean, the session is kind of interesting. I mean, it's really heating up. We got uh, lots of big issues. Uh, we got uh, fought uh, farm uh, farm worker overtime is what it's called. Some people call it ag overtime. Uh, same thing. Uh, focus obviously is on what can be done to provide uh, you know better uh, compensation for a very difficult job and also stay competitive with the um, outside markets. So our producers, our growers, whether it's berries, vegetables, trees, what have you, wheat, uh, compete on a very uh, national and global scale. And so uh, we have to be able to uh, be competitive as well. So uh, trying to come up with a bill that uh, everyone likes, it might be difficult, but um, we are continuing to work on it. There's a hearing this evening. If you uh, would like to spend several hours of your evening, I think at 5.30 in-house uh, business and labor, uh, you can tune in to get one more um, online meeting. And uh, you'll hear, hear a lot of testimony on that. I will be tuned in. I will not be part of the hearing because it's a house hearing. Uh, so I mentioned the, uh, the forest uh, treatment thinning uh, bill. Also, we are trying to get going. Another issue uh, is really what we can do to support law enforcement to be able to get a handle on especially illegal marijuana grows, cartel involvement. Uh, many of you obviously saw the headlines uh, um, I think it was last fall, it feels like, on the cartel operation that was uh, shut down in Deschutes County. Uh, we need to stay on top of that. Unfortunately, there seems to be a bit of a stronghold down in Southern Oregon right now, and it's just out of control. And so we have to find a way to provide law enforcement resources necessary to deal with that, combat that. Uh, as I told the committee chair yesterday, being the uniter that I am, I have understood in the short session that it may be necessary to pursue a general fund appropriation for the necessary money. So uh, this is where I am headed currently. Uh, we can talk about measure 110 and its distribution in the 23 session. We just do not have time to do that in this short session. Uh, but I believe measure 110 displaced some uh, county and city and law enforcement money. And I'm all in favor and support of mental health treatment and addiction treatment, because I believe that we have to invest there in order to make sure that um, people are getting the help that they need because we all know that 
our homeless populations uh, are struggling with some of those addictions as well. Obviously not everybody, but I, it feels like in the studies that I've seen, um, there's a majority, if not a strong majority who have some addiction issues that uh, if aren't resolved, likely won't resolve their homelessness no matter what we do. So we have to be working on this at a pretty holistic level. Appreciate the county's efforts in trying to deal uh, with the homeless issue. Uh, it's, um, it's a tough issue statewide. Uh, I can tell you that all over um, the metro area, in Salem, Eugene, I traveled a lot during uh, redistricting several, uh, probably, I don't know, two, 3,000 miles at least, and drove all over the state, was in nearly every district. And the one common theme popping up, especially as you got into more metro areas, was the homelessness issue. And virtually all the communities look the same. Uh, what you see out on Hunnell Road, what you see in other parts of the city and county are very uh, similar to what you'd see anywhere in the state. And so um, this is a statewide problem it needs to be resolved, but I appreciate the county trying to weigh in and uh, do what they do what you all can in pretty difficult circumstances there. Uh, what else can I talk about that you would even care about? Um, hmm. I don't know, questions? Answers, anybody? Um, Commission, um, Senator Cannell, it's, it's um, Commissioner Adair. I'm wondering the 1573, the Senate bill, do we have the other 15 Eastern Oregon counties then? Is that an amendment that um, will be added? Oh, is that what you want? Is that what I want? Well, that's yeah. what I heard was going to happen. Um, I talked to Ben Sunday about it because, you know, we discussed it at AOC and I just wanted to get feedback. And that's that's what Ben had told me. Yes, so Commissioner, Commissioner, once again, I am a uniter. Uh, so we're going to do our best to take care of everybody. Of course, uh, you know, we started out with 10. I would just say that um, we started with the 10 most vulnerable counties as it relates to wildfire trying to make some big big progress there of course we also have the wildfire bill and some money from there uh, but you know it seems like uh, everybody wants in on an incredible bill uh, you know sponsored by your state senator so we you know we're going to try to work to get everybody there so commissioner Adair, i appreciate you advocating for deschutes as well as um, you know the counties as a whole um, it, you know, it's it's nice to be able to um, get consensus, but you know, sometimes you uh, have to divide up the pie a little bit more. So well, I appreciate you adding the other counties because remember, I was raised in Hepner and Laurel County. And yes, uh, yes. Well, so anyway, you know, when you drive across Eastern Oregon, you see it, you know, and um, thinning seems to be um, one of the big um, articles that were written up in the bulletin. What was it about a week ago? That huge article on thinning and how 80% of some of the forests need to be thinned out. I believe it was California they were referring to. So thank you for being the uniter that you are. Well, to shift, uh, thank you. Um, you guys picked up on that quick. So if the rest of you could all say that unison, Senator Canope is uniter, uh, that would be great. Um, no, um, so the, um, as you, I mean, as you guys drive around Oregon, you can see that Almost any county can be hit by this. Um, east side, you know, Southern Oregon, Central, definitely, definitely vulnerable. Hood River, the Dalles, they wanted in on it too. You know, they've had, you know, I think their issues were more on Wheatland than it was for us recently, you know, although they had the uh, very incredibly unfortunate uh, fire a few years back uh, in the gorge. But uh, nonetheless, we, we need to do what we can to preserve uh, the assets of uh, Oregon for uh, future generations. And so I appreciate all you working on that. Uh, big issue, uh, workforce. Uh, governor's got a big workforce plan. 
uh, they uh, spent all kinds of money on that. And um, the governor has a lot of, a lot of expenditures. She had uh, Business Oregon, she had infrastructure. I think that was like 50 million and 40 million. Um, I did ask her if all that was gonna be spent in Deschutes County or if other counties were gonna be able to get a piece of that too. Apparently other counties are gonna get a piece of it. I don't know why, but um, $90 million would have sounded great to me for Deschutes County, but uh, we're gonna share once again, Unite her. Uh, that's the way it works in the short session. You got to be, you know, you got to work collaboratively. So that's what we're trying to do. Uh, but you know, the workforce package probably goes, I mean, we got some concerns about it and, uh, you know, how quickly, cause basically I think I heard somebody saying something about that, you know, they had a few candidates, but normally they'd have a whole lot more that is everywhere. And I think you guys know that. So the labor shortage is um, it's an emergency. So we need to get people back to work and fill those jobs now. And it's an emergency in healthcare. It's an emergency in, you know, retail operations. How many times have you guys tried to go out to your favorite restaurant recently? And it normally it would be open and it's closed, you know, it's closed two days a week because they can't find anybody to work. And um, so the workforce issue whether it's construction or healthcare or uh, technology, automotive, what have you, um, definitely a um, huge problem. So uh, the whole legislature is trying to work with the governor, solve that. We had that bill in labor this morning. It'll probably move out on uh, Thursday. I'm not sure I'll vote for it out of committee yet. Uh, it's going to go down to ways and means, get another whack at it. But uh, I'm supportive of the overall concept and hopefully trying to work out enough details to, again, make it bipartisan, make people happy. Uh, other questions? Um, um, Senator Knope, I also wanted to add, you know, with the marijuana issue that I was listening to uh, Commissioner DeGroote from Klamath County, and he was saying that they were having they were having to spend all kinds of crazy money down there too. You know, we had the 49 greenhouses here by alfalfa, but truly um, it's in nine counties. It's, it's, it's a mess. So whatever, um, hopefully some of those bills will get through. Um, and thank you for that um, this morning. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Um, yeah, it's, it's spreading. I mean, that's the point of the emergency is that you have to get on top of it with, um, uh, very aggressively and we got the grow season you know the big grow season coming up and you got to get on top of it right now and you got to have the resources and law enforcement necessary you know it, you've got to have you got to have da you got to have defenders you got to have uh, resources in place for people who are being trafficked and um, you know it's um, it, it's a big big problem and so uh, it is an emergency, we're working on it. Appreciate uh, Commissioner, you bringing that up and um, you know, to the degree that we can keep it out of the Chutes County, we uh, wanna do that as well, so. We've got a property owner that uh, recently I got in contact with and he leased out a property, probably illegal activity, but not confirmed last summer but now he's been, it's been abandoned and he's got an environmental disaster on his hand. And this is prime farmland with COID water on it, but he's not gonna be able to even plant and utilize his property unless he gets that mess cleaned up and the people that leased it are long gone. So uh, I think that was a, a point in time last year, the reality of the situation is there's a lot of pressure on uh, these illegal coordinated grows, but uh, we cannot let this keep uh, happening. No, we, we most certainly can't. Uh, well, uh, Nick Lelak, uh, what, uh, what keeps you up at night that I can help you with at the state level? Well, thanks, Senator. Um, a lot of things keep me up at night. But uh, you know, right now, we're looking forward to tomorrow morning um, with the uh, Collaborative Housing Office bill. That's uh, certainly a big one. Um, 
uh, our, our new community development director, uh, Peter Gutowski and I right now are just coordinating to make sure that we have the legislative fix for the accessory dwelling unit bill so that that, uh, that can, be, can be fixed. And so we're just trying to figure out what, what bill number uh, that provision is in, just given that that housing is so important to, to our county among others. Um, certainly uh, facility funding for our, our courthouse and a lot of other uh, projects that we mentioned. Um, just given we've got a lot of big demands uh, in our county, as you well know. So thanks so much for your help and um, great discussion this morning. Well, I feel like I was talking the whole time, Nick. So I, I hope it was a discussion, but thank you. Yeah, let's, uh, let's keep working on those uh, uh, financial issues because I, I know, uh, you know, the growth of the county, unprecedented, right? I mean, so uh, we got to keep up with uh, the, all the needs that exist and are ever expanding. So uh, I really appreciate uh, all your efforts because you know, it, when things are static and, you know, you don't, um, you know, you don't have to worry too much about uh, too few streets and too few sewers and too few law enforcement and all that. Um, uh, that's one thing. Uh, obviously, if you're, you know, losing your timber resources, it's pretty tough, uh, like Josephine County has, you know, and um, so they've been pretty decimated by that financially. But Financial decimation can happen uh, with growth as well and um, trying to keep up with infrastructure and everything that needs to happen, whether that's mental health resources or, or, or what have you. And so, and then I notice uh, we got more than 10 people on the screen, which means that one of you has COVID uh, because one in 10 people in Deschutes County right now has COVID. So thank goodness we're on Zoom right now. You may not even know you have it. So, uh, you know, you probably, uh, we should probably all get tested. Uh, but uh, this is uh, a big issue uh, everywhere, the Capitol. We're out uh, five or six senators right now. I think we're out at least six senators because uh, of health issues right now. And, uh, you know, so we're, you know, we're four senator, five senators away from not even having a quorum uh, because of quote COVID. So uh, it's, a, it's a big issue. I'm sure it's impacted the county as well, uh, but literally one in 10 shoots county residents. Uh, that's, that's pretty amazing. So uh, when you go to the grocery store or wherever, you know, you're looking around going, wow, uh, it's tough and everybody's been affected by it. And so hopefully we can get through this and get to a more endemic stage of this um, virus and um, get back to uh, more normal uh, operations. But uh, thank you guys for all working through uh, what is a very difficult time for our county and our state and, uh, you know, country and the world, really. So, uh, and, um, you know, I, I know people are a little tense. And um, so I've gotten a whole lot funnier over the, uh, you know, the last few months. Uh, I've been working on my stuff. It's good stuff. Um, so, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't know. I think some of my colleagues are getting weary of me, but uh, overall, I think we're, you know, I think we're getting along, uh, keeping those relationships uh, going, and uh, trying to help each other out. So that's kind of where things are at right now. Uh, your lobby team does a great job keeping us informed and uh, letting us know. Definitely um, give me an update on where that um, accessory dwelling uh, fix is because I uh, I'm not sure which bill it's in either, and so. I want to be keeping track of that and making sure that we got that on our list of, of things that we want to, uh, you know, get through. So um, appreciate that. Yeah, we'll Senator, do so for sure. Thank you. Senator Knope, Thank we'd you. asked for like 5.2 million for several um, important projects in Deschutes County. And one of them was 3 million uh, Lapine Community Health Center, which was open all during COVID, mm -hmm. has um, a plan going that, they had asked us for some help with. So please don't let that one follow through. I, I wanted to ask for 4 million and I got over, I got voted over, but at least um, really Lapine has such a huge draw and we need more healthcare on this side of the mountain. So um, if those can be watched, that would be great. Yeah, and I, I, over the line. 
yeah, I appreciate the fact that uh, you guys uh, jumped into action there. We got a lot of uh, we got a lot of emails, I think, from uh, Whitney and some uh, submissions and all that. And you guys just did great getting that stuff in. Um, I honestly don't. I know there's in terms of bonding projects. I know there's not a lot of money available, uh, but then we uh, we don't know what the negotiation is going to be in terms of uh, general fund and what might happen there. Uh, but I'll just say that Deschutes County was well represented in the amount uh, and number of projects that were submitted. So uh, I would think just, uh, you know, just on the fact that we got so many that we'll get some, I know we won't get all of it, uh, but uh, if they're, you know, I, I'm hoping they don't just say, oh, I've seen partial lists and uh, it's a lot of money. So adds a lot of projects and a lot of money. So uh, I hope they don't uh, give up on it, just not fund anything, but this short session, because uh, it, it's hard to, after a long session where a lot of money was spent and there's a big um, big project called CAMS 3. And if you don't know what CAMS 3 is, that is the uh, third phase of the earthquake proofing of the Capitol. And it is Peter Courtney's number one, a legacy priority. I heard, I asked him how much it was, and I, I'm pretty sure I misheard him because he said, I think he said 389 million. I was like, um, get the paddles out. Uh, you're going to need to revive me because I think I was told at the beginning of this whole thing a few years ago, the whole project was supposed to cost 300 million. But well, maybe I got, yeah, maybe I heard that wrong too. But it's like, man alive, that is a lot of money. So, uh, the capital is under construction perpetually now uh, because of that. And we are back in our office. As you can see, the uh, very decorative bookshelf uh, done by uh, the uh, corrections employees years ago, the um, uh, correction industries did all these uh, bookcases and things like that. Uh, so when you see one like this, uh, it means that we're in, in our office uh, or we're fancy enough to be able to Put that picture up for a background. I am not that fancy. So you get what you get. Uh, it looks like you get about half my head is what it looks like. Uh, but uh, yeah, there we go. It, it got the whole head in there. Um, anyway, so uh, we are a little concerned at that how much um, bandwidth that might take and uh, projects as it relates to the state capital. Uh, but I mean, we're well, I mean, we're years into this project now. And so uh, I don't think we're uh, gonna walk away from it. So the question is, is what, you know, what kind of resources, what kind of bonds, all that, and uh, you know, where's the money come from? Is it ARPA, is it a uh, general fund? Is it bonds, is it a combination? And so um, the president's pretty committed to that. Great, thank you. Commissioner Chang, did you have a question? Yeah, Senator, if I could just circle back to 1573. Uh, thank you again so much for your attention to wildfire concerns throughout our state and particularly here in Nahum County um, and for, you know, uh, sponsoring this bill. And uh, the um, I, I, I'm seeing in the amendment that I, a whole bunch of additional counties were added. And, and thank you for doing that. I That was the overwhelming response when we were processing this at the AOC Natural Resources Committee the other day. Um, from a Deschutes County perspective, my, my two lingering questions, concerns, which you know, Ben said, yeah, I think so, but like, I didn't get like a, I wasn't, it wasn't a, you know, 100% certain, um, were uh, number one, the question of whether the once the, the dollars are transferred to the county, whether we will be able to hold them beyond the end of the biennium, um, and two, whether we would be able to use these funds for um, you know, site prep and unit layout and, and, and uh, planning work, you know, the things that you need in addition to implementation dollars. Um, and if, uh, if it's possible to get us a like a firm answer back on those two questions uh, sometime before the, the the bill, you know, comes to um, you know, comes to a vote or you know it, it goes through its committees. Um, I would love to, you know, if 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 we can say yes on both of those things, I would love to be able to come and give testimony in support. 
Uh, I'll work on that. Uh, I'll talk to Ben. Uh, it is nice to have specific language that is um, easy to understand and tells you exactly what you want to know. Um, but sometimes um, we have to uh, rely on LC's interpretation of what they've written. Uh, so we'll try to get it a little more specific for you and um, find out if you can hold that money um, past the end of the biennium. It's an excellent question. And so we'll, we'll get answers for you on that. Thank you. And, and just again, thank you for your, your focus and attention on you know, a, a really important statewide issue as well. Yeah, it's coming I mean, clearly uh, a significant issue for the entire state, uh, especially to Shoots County, since you all live there, as do I. Um, and I've lived there a long time, uh, 40 plus years. I, um, you know, we can't keep having these summers where uh, you can barely go outside and you miss the beauty of the whole region and the health impacts are significant. And there, you know, I, <clears throat> I'm impacted health wise uh, because I have asthma and some other issues and there are people who are way more impacted than I am. And so, um, you know, we need to make sure that we're uh, being as responsible as we can be and keeping those health, uh, forests healthy around us as, uh, as best we can, because, um, you know, we want to get back to the time where you have all that uh, summer opportunity for recreation and outdoor activity and, you know, climbing and hiking and, you know, boating and whatever else people love to do. And, um, of course, fishing. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you, we, it's been challenging the last few summers, as you guys know. And so we got to bring it into that. We cannot keep going uh, on that. And so uh, I know there's uh, obviously a whole spectrum of issues, climate related and otherwise, um, but we have to do what we can in terms of forest health that we can actually have an impact on that impacts uh, our citizens' ability to have a healthy lifestyle here in Central Oregon, because that is why a lot of people uh, like to live and work here and, and recreate here. So, um, you know, we, this is a joint thing. Deschutes County has done well uh, working with the Nature Conservancy and other organizations to, uh, you know, do projects and, and thin things out. Uh, but, you know, there's a long way to go all across the state. And, you know, even in our county, we can, we can do more and um, and we should. So we're happy to partner with you on on that and and other things as well. Thank you. Great. Well, Senator Knopp, we've taken up quite a bit of your time this morning. Um, are there any other questions? I'm sure you have some important things to get back to. Um, Phil, did you have anything else that we should touch base with? Senator Knope on this at this time? Not at this time, but I'm sure something will pop up at some okay. point. Great. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you guys. Thank you for your work. Appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you soon. Thank you. Yes. All right, commissioners, would you like me to start breezing through the uh, remainder of our list? Freezing is a good word, yes. All right. <laughs> um, I think we were at Ford, uh, House Bill 4071, which is up to a, a public hearing today related to mental health. Um, this is going to be connected to another bill later um, because it's stemming from the same report that OHA did uh, to help broaden and increase behavioral health and mental health access to rural communities. 4071 specifically modifies um, criteria for financial incentives in the behavioral health system. Specifically, it creates a new category for a licensed uh, category of licensed marriage and family therapist and professional counselors and has a reference as an associate. And then it defines what that associate is, which is an individual working towards licensure 
and registered with a post-degree supervision clinic experience, clinical experience. Effectively, from the conversations that we saw in the paperwork, this is just allowing us to have more people in the shoot to help um, uh, help folks get access to care. Um, currently, I believe they have to get all the way through that process, but now they would be able to apply as an associate and be able to help with the pent up demand of services. And um, I would pause there to see if our uh, Whitney or our departments have anything else to add to that. Janice, do you want to? Nope. Yeah. Um, That's, he summed it up accurately. It's pretty straightforward. But it says um, no priority on our on our list. Is that true? I think we're really selective about what we highlight for priority. This is probably one that'll just go through because it's a kind of administrative fix. So that's why it's not prioritized. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next one would be 4082. And this is just directing, it does have an amendment, the dash ones that will be heard and it will replace the original measure. Nothing dramatic in changing of the measure. It just does some uh, legalese uh, corrections and it also helps uh, unify us with the federal um, VA system. Effectively, this directs the county governing boards to designate a veterans remains coordinator and then um, uh, specifies uh, some duties or outlines responsibilities of the county veterans service officers in that process. Um, I know I'm probably not doing the bill justice in, um, but just trying to move along a little bit quicker, but that does have a work session scheduled um, and it does look like they are going to be adopting those dash one amendments. And this was discussed at AOC yesterday in uh, the, the the group proper, and it was just mentioned that um, in in counties that put any efforts into this, there's uh, you know they'll find that there's a set of remains or a set of activity, but then it, it's just a spike of activity that'll drop off after you do it the first time. Also, okay. Miss Bill is coming with a staff recommendation of support three. Um, so, if that feels comfortable to the board, yes. So on the sheet here, it says no priority, Whitney. So that needs to be there. Sometimes um, we'll send the same bill to multiple departments. And what the summary report will sometimes do is it'll reflect if a department hasn't responded to that request, it kind of overrides the initial review that was conducted. And we did have staff weigh in um, with a recommendation of support three, but it looks like it might've gotten, I did send this one out twice. So it looks like it might've pulled the second uh, some request in for you on that report. Okay. Um, and commissioners, I apologize about this next one. This is a, a one that's going to be a contentious bill again this session, Senate Bill 1534. It has a public hearing only today at 1 p.m. This is related to car uh, biological carbon sequestration, which it sounds like an important bill. It is an important bill. However, they have not posted any paperwork, amendments, staff measure summaries, or anything. And I literally just refreshed the page to check again, and nothing is still posted. All I know is that there will be a gut and stuff amendment to this bill, um, but it has not been released. Um, the, the work groups working on it with the governor's office has not released anything. So, um, and that is scheduled for one o'clock today. Um, they've been um, on these contentious bills, Usually, um, you see LPRO starting to post things about an hour before the hearing. It can go all the way up to right as the hearing starts as well. But I just don't have any information of what that gut and stuff amendment is looking like at this point. So, but it is scheduled just for a public hearing. And then it is, um, it, it, there are conversations of moving this bill. It just might end up going to ways and means or rules so that they cannot, um, conversations and deliberations can continue. Thanks, Bill. And commissioners, this is a bill, Commissioner Chang, all definitely, um, that we're tracking. Uh, Commissioner Chang had flagged this, and as we did in the last session, when one of you flags a bill individually, we track it without position or priority associated with it so that you can discuss it a group in, as a group in this uh, meeting. So, Commissioner Chang, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, I, um, there was a lot of discussion about this bill in the, I can't even remember which AOC uh, steering committee it was the other day, but um, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of support. Um, and, you know, if, if people don't like the bill as written, then I, you know, I'm not going to um, push back on that. But uh, at the higher level, my, my big concern here is that um, we've just, we're, we're seeing the, 
executive order, the climate, uh, the climate protection plan uh, form up, they left out uh, carbon sequestration. So you were basically, you're not allowed to take that money that we're collecting from carbon emitters and invest that in carbon sequestration projects right now. And I think we should be able to do that. And, and this bill, I believe, you know, the, you know, whether it's designed well, the bill is written well or not, the intention is basically to get us the information we need to be able to incentivize farmers and forest landowners um, to, uh, you know, optimize management of their, their land, you know, do regenerative agriculture, you know, uh, do restoration forestry, things like that, to be able to, uh, you know, sequester more carbon on the landscape. And so to the extent that there's opportunities for us to realize that goal, you know, to, to create a flow of funds to, to landowners and land managers in Deschutes County um, for those purposes, uh, I, I'd like to see that move forward. But, um, you know, that this is, you know, how much, how much we can involve, we, we can get engaged in a complicated bill that, seems to be sort of a moving target during a short session. I don't know. And I think that that, uh, just to add on to that commissioner, I think, yeah, what is said in committee today will definitely allow us to know if there's more time for that or not. If they just plan to move it out of the, the policy committee straight, and yeah, it limits the ability to have conversations just be, for the sake of meeting a deadline. But if they do move it to rules or ways and means, um, those deadlines are no longer applicable and then maybe some uh, additional time for engagement if needed is available. Um, but I it, it will be dependent upon how, uh, what we see today, so. I will keep refreshing the page. And as soon as I, I will be reading through those materials as they come available and happy to forward those on to anybody. So. Thank you. But, and it's also, it's valuable. Thank you, Commissioner Chang to explain, you know, this is the, the vision is what projects can be invested in if there's resources. So that's good to understand. That's the big picture here. Uh, but yeah, we need to stand by until we get more clarity on what, what the bill is. So it sounds like it could change quite, quite a bit in the near future. So thank you, Phil, for doing that, keeping us up to date. No problem. And that uh, we were, uh, thank you, Whitney and Commissioner, for forwarding that, uh, the email so that I can make sure that stays on our list. So um, tomorrow is our revenue forecast for the state. And I do want to just note right after that, or about the same time, it's not the same time, that I just have that marked on our calendar as a key deadline right at the beginning of the day. Um, revenue meets in the afternoon. So um, if you're looking at the look ahead calendar, the fact that revenue uh, forecast at the top doesn't mean that that proceeds our eight o'clock hearings. Um, just want to note that. But our, the first bill that would be of interest is that 4051 related to housing. Um, I know that this is potentially a vehicle for an amendment to take care of the um, our campgrounds issue and maybe potentially the ADU, ADU issue um, from last session. Uh, it is just up for a public hearing tomorrow and that it already has a work session scheduled for the following Monday. So it did meet the deadline and it will continue to be alive. I believe this is also a key bill for Representative Fahey, who is now the majority leader. And so um, we can reach out and be uh, happy to see if there's opportunities there to have um, some of our issues taken care of. What I do know is they are going to hear conversations tomorrow on the Dash 3 amendments. Um, this will replace the measure completely and it does three main things. Um, one, it's going to extend the sunset of the task force on homelessness and racial disparities to 2026. And then it's going to direct the task force to also work with state agencies to look at what current funding mechanisms are available in uh, housing funds uh, programs and see from start to finish application through determination, through evaluation of those applications, if things need to be adjusted to make sure that um, the, they're more reflective of what we're facing as a state today. Um, the second thing is it is it extends the deadline from July 1st, 2022 to July 1st, 2023, um, for which a local government must approve an application for development of land for an emergency shelter. Um, and it, it still keeps in there that it's subject to terms and conditions provided in the law that was passed previously um, 2000, in House Bill 2006. Um, and then the third part is it modifies language to clarify that the local government shall allow affordable housing and may not require a zone change or conditional use permit 
on property that is owned by a public body or nonprofit corporation or religious corporation if it's zoned commercial um, to allow religious assemblies or public land or as public land. So there's three main focuses in that amendment. Um, again, it's it's I think there's still time that if we can are able to visit with uh, Representative Fahey that there's possibility of um, having um, some other technical fixes there. This is not the only relating to housing clause bill, so we do have other avenues, but this is the one that seems to be moving um, to and I think that that's to your point Commissioner Devone um, when we were talking about potentially having this as the vehicle for the campgrounds. Yeah, and I don't know that there's a specific legislative wording that's even popped up yet you know just the concepts that i've been floating around and for deschutes county proper you know a opportunity for market rate campground at the perimeter of the town is the is the concept you know so i don't know is there any way to take this any farther right now or yeah, I think the, maybe the next first step is if we have like a sentence or a description that we can say what our goal is um, and get that to one of our legislators like Tim or, or um, Jason or anyone, they could run it by legislative council and see if it fits within the parameters of the bill already, because it's so broad just related to housing, um, it, I'm, it seems like it is a good fit. Um, but we can at least see what legislative council comes back as. And then if it comes back as a negative, um, I do know legislative council and their system has the ability to say, here's the bills that are left out there alive yeah, that okay. this would fit into. So there's some action that we should be doing here in the next day or two and on that, correct? Yes. If somebody could help me find the right paragraph description, I'm happy to track down yep. a legislator. That's I'll send you a couple of emails that, that are awesome. popping around here. Um, if, I could, well, if I could throw in another campground type concepts, which I, I think is actually not necessarily related to, to what Commissioner Gabon is suggesting. The idea has also come up that um, if we could extend the emergency siting authority under HB 2006 to uh, additional kinds of zones and additional types of facilities, um, then that would be uh, you know, one of the ways to achieve um, essentially authorization of uh, you know some of the you know some of the land uses that we've been talking about. Um, so I'd, I'd like to throw that into the mix. If this, if this particular bill is, you know, one of its primary pieces is to extend 2000, HB 2006, like if that could include various kinds of tweaks um, by, uh, you know, allowing emergency siting of, of homeless shelter in a, a wider range of zones beyond the, you know, incorporated areas and a rural residential zone areas uh, that could give us some flexibility to do some of the things that uh, you know to, to pursue some of the ideas that have been floating around in the community in the last few months uh, as well. And Phil to top it off I had a conversation this morning with the chair of our planning commission and we are both on the same side of the page about manufactured homes. We need workforce housing Clearly, we need it in Deschutes County. We don't have enough workforce housing. The funding goes to affordable housing for, for people that aren't working, you know, with low um, income levels, truly workforce housing. So we were saying, is there anything we can do for manufactured homes to um, add? I, it's probably not possible, but if there's any way we could get a little pilot project in somewhere, that would be so helpful. Yeah, um, so there is... Um... <laughs> I don't know if this is the right vehicle, but the very next bill on the list is related to manufacturing and prefabricated structures. So, um, yeah. coincidentally, <laughs> and so, oh, um, so, but let me pause and see if there's any, um, Whitney, do we have any questions or anything like that on that last bill? Sorry, before I- go. No, that's okay. I just wanted to clarify, would the board like to designate a priority or position for um, House Bill 4051? Because if we don't, it, it won't necessarily reoccur on your tracking for weeks to come. So I don't know if you wanted to direct staff for what you'd like to see in terms of a potential priority and position for that bill, if you'd like to continue tracking it. Maybe we uh, could assign to a level two for it and so that we, we keep tracking it. And if it looks like it's a vehicle for some of the things that we want to do, we could we could bump that up. I agree. So potentially a neutral okay. two. Okay. 
And then um, before we move forward in the calendar, I did want to just go back to today. Um, it looks like Nick was able to get some information about uh, Senate Bill 1533, which may be the vehicle for the rural ADU fix. And so that bill has a hearing scheduled for this afternoon. Um, and I just sent, which is not fair because it was a real time request to review that bill to Peter. <laughs> um, so I'll acknowledge that, but I, um, I don't know if we may want to um, adopt position on that bill and or monitor or um, engage with the hearing this afternoon. And then the third uh, was I did just want to do a time check with the board and see if you'd like to continue um, today's session past our scheduled time or if you'd like to pick this up at another another time. So, so. Okay. Indeed, to that last question first, Whitney, uh, if there's a way we could spend just a few more minutes on stuff that we need all the department heads for, um, that would be great. And then I, I can stay till 1230 or 1245, but I don't want to keep everybody on here for, um, you know, if, if we're not going to be talking about bills that, that relate to their, their uh, subject area. Commissioner and Whitney, if I can add there, I have three bills left for today, and then actually Thursday, Friday, and Mondays are actually duplicates of bills we already talked about. So if that helps with deciding on timing, um, some of the ones we talked about just had public hearings. Their work sessions are either Thursday, Friday, or Monday, so we don't have to recap uh, cap capture those at all. So just yeah, let's get through a few more bills today. I have another meeting I could get to, but I can stand by till we're done here. All right. Yes, let's keep breezing. Okay, so um, so the next bill is 4064. Um, this is related to prefabricated and uh, manufactured housing. To your point, Commissioner Adair, this bill is going to have an amendment. Um, uh, so we have, uh, they're all coming from Representative Marsh. Um, she is... She is an interesting one to work on to try to get an amendment in the process. And so... Um, we are going, um, I have no problem visiting more with you, Commissioner, offline to see what that fix might look like. But she is uh, trying to define or modify definitions around prefabricated structures and manufacturing homes. And then this bill specifically clarifies that local governments must allow the siting of manufactured homes and prefabricated structures in single family dwelling zones inside UGBs, and then prohibits local governments from applying standards to those uh, lo located outside manufactured dwelling parks. That, it goes a little bit more in depth. It's a very technical bill. I'm happy to get you the staff measure summary on that, Commissioner. Um, but this might be one of those vehicles. I'm happy to ask the question to Representative Marsh. All of the three amendments are being proposed by her. So I'm assuming she's, uh, this is her, her take home bill kind of thing. So I'm happy to track that down if you'd like me to and then bring it back next meeting. So. Please. All right. Um, the next one, and I'm going to kick to Ryan on the second, this very uh, last one, but I have one in front of there. Um, the one is uh, about building codes and the rich called the reach code. But before then, we do have a bill that's specific to Deschutes County 4123. And this is related to uh, DAS setting up um, grants for local governments and nonprofit corporations for the creation of coordinated homeless response centers or systems. Um, they are going to entertain the Dash 1 amendment. This bill specifically gives a million dollars to specific entities to coordinate, the, uh, to set these up and coordinate them. But then the one that the original bill just says $1 million to Deschutes County or for Deschutes County, the effective Dash 1 amendment expands the name from Deschutes County to, uh, expands name Deschutes County Coordinated Homeless Response System partners to include the city of Lapine and city of Sisters. And so I don't know if that affects when we were talking about capital construction projects, um, if that was, if that maybe affects this. Um, so I just wanted to pause there. This, uh, they have not posted the, the paperwork yet, um, but that is up for tomorrow. And so that should be posted today and I can get that turned around to the folks as well. So, um, but I would like to know if that's something we are supporting, if that should be a priority one, two, um, where that should be. Okay. It is up at 8 a.m. tomorrow in housing for public hearing only. Uh, so um, I, you know, I'm in a spot where I'm supporting, you know, I don't, I don't know that it's our lead bill number one, or, you know, it's, it's uh, an idea that's bubbling up a partnership with the city of Bend and 
uh, representative's office. So she's kind of, I support the support position. I'd put a high level of priority on it and, and also be supportive. Okay. Yes. So leave it and support. Thank you. Perfect. And then as soon as I uh, have, they publish that, um, I will get that turned around to Whitney and the team on the paperwork. So um, the last big bill I just wanted to cover is one that's becoming a very contentious bill. It had a hearing on Monday or yesterday. It has a possible work session tomorrow. And I imagine this is going to probably be a, a bigger conversation once it gets to the House as well. And it's related to reach codes. It was a bill that was con controversial um, in the last session. This is the return version. And um, I have not been following that like Ryan has. So I'm going to be punting over to him to explain that bill. I think Ryan just entered notes in the chat that he's having audio difficulties. So uh, maybe we circle back on that one. Not a problem. And I think we have that included in our end of week report already, or at least flagged to uh, so. So I'll make sure that the Deschutes one has the construction report we put together and that will have a nice summary of that as well. And that is all I have for right now. Um, again, Thursday, Friday are a lot of repeats, um, but I'm also happy if anybody wants to reach out to me today. Um, I have one commitment from two to three, and outside of that, I can be available by phone to go over any of the remaining bills. And um, Bill, you did see that the road department is saying House Bill 4063 isn't opposed. Isn't opposed. Yes, and it, here it says House Bill 4063 is related to housing. So I'm wondering if that's the right number. Is Chris Doty still on? I'm still on. Yeah, it's related to housing to the degree that it seeks to uh, speed up uh, permit the permit process. Um, but there are some provisions that relate to the road department and the surveyor's office. Um, you were talking about 4064. So this. I was just getting my getting my licks in. Right. It, it sounded like our meeting might be wrapping up. Can you explain the the uh, four zero six three issues a little bit more? You say the road department and surveyor's office. Yeah, so so four zero six three has a couple sections. The first one is kind of this expansive study bill to to look to to speed up permitting processes for um, residential projects. Uh, the the section after that kind of isolates a few things. Um, one of which is allowing for, uh, not allowing for, but requiring permits to be issued prior to platting of lots. And so that creates a, a lot of concern with uh, the county surveyors regarding uh, the potential for homes and, and other things to be built in the wrong place uh, before, you know, property lines have been officially platted. Um, the second piece of that is that it also requires permits to be issued uh, before uh, paving happens. And so from a just a public works standpoint, um, all these homes under construction while the streets have yet to be paved uh, seems a little short-sighted. Uh, we're more concerned about the county surveyor impact because that relates to you know, all the development that occurs in Deschutes County, not just in the unincorporated area. We'll reach out to the proponents and see if what they can do to address these concerns. Yeah, so the AOC is, is um, I guess, targeting this one as well. Um, just, just so you know. Yeah. So I did on the reach code side of things. I did reach out to the chair and uh, the uh, committee administrator for the committee on uh, that was handling the reach code issue, and I did just get an up to the minute uh, thing while we were on this call uh, that that they are drafting an amendment to that bill that will create a work group or a task force that will be looking at what can be done both in the new new built environment and the existing building stock to try to adjust energy efficiency and get some. Uh, uh, you know, improvements on efficiency for both new construction and existing building stock. And then commissioners, we do have other bills that departments have reviewed and provided proposals on in terms of priority and position that we haven't covered today. And I'll defer uh, to the board on how you'd like to handle that. If you'd like to just receive a summary from staff on the call, if there are priority bills that they'd like to engage with you on, or if you'd like us to pull a report that's, um, you know, inclusive of bills we didn't touch on today and, and review them at our next meeting. It's really at the board's preference. 
Okay, so Whitney, we need to know, are those bills going ahead? Because what we just heard about the Senate bills, are they going ahead for the House? And then can you can you give us a report really quickly then on it? So we actually are um, up to date. I don't know, Commissioner Adair. I can try to pull a report out of the system quickly, or I might just ask um, specifically by department if departments are aware of priority bills that they're tracking that they unmute and provide you just an update on what the bill is and what their recommended priority and position is. Would that work? Sure. Okay. How about uh, how about in particularly if they know that it it's going to go to a hearing sometime in the next few days before our next legislative uh, update. Yep, that's great clarification. I'll go ahead and um, I don't know if folks want to just come off off mute and we'll try to take these one by one. It's like Janice. Uh, thanks, Whitney. We have one bill that I highlighted as support priority two. It's House Bill four zero zero four. Um, it is a bill that would provide funds to uh, it, for a short-term fix for behavioral health staffing issues specifically, and it would allow for retention bonuses and increased compensation for behavioral health workforce. It's really intended to address the crisis in um, workforce. Um, I met with Chris Bell with AOCMHP, which supports the bill with other county HR and AFSCME staff, all of whom support the bill. Um, and I think it is scheduled for a hearing on Thursday, it looks like, with House Behavioral Health. So it's moving. See, that's another bill that says no priority on our schedule. So something's not working. Well, it's another bill that got assigned twice for review and the second review is pending. Um, so Janice's review is in, but there's also a pending review in the system. And it looks like when this report got run, it pulled the, the pending review. I, I uh, generally support that idea, but we might want to just stay neutral. That's going to be a budget discussion and, uh, you know, state legislative kind of wrangling about, you know, other resources and is that the right policy to, to be supporting that. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess even if we say support, I, I don't think you should put a lot of legislative effort into it either, I, you know, that's my thought. I don't have a good understanding of this, but my impression is that they are talking about uh, having, uh, you know, a substantial chunk of funding to to deploy to expand uh, out of the short session overall for the state. And so I'd, I'd be concerned if we're not if we're not advocating for the expenditure categories that you know are important to us that um, you know where we may be missing out on an opportunity to 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 steer more dollars to the things that are more important to us from the state. And, you know, so with that, I would, I would say I, I, I would like to assign a higher level of priority to this, this item. I, I'd leave it with a two. I support. Thank you. Just let me know if there are any questions I can answer going forward. I'm happy to respond. I did just receive a call from Lane County and they're asking if Deschutes County would be willing to offer support for an amendment they're working on to a bill. So if it's the right time, let me know when it's the right time. I'd like to make that uh, ask before we get off the line. Is it a health bill? No. Okay. Well, do you want to go ahead and do it right now, Ryan? Okay, so last session, there was a bill called House Bill 2818. It offered one year extension to um, the sort of definition of what was considered compensation for to allow employers one year from uh, to offer retention bonuses or new hire bonuses uh, and have those 
be exempt from consideration under the pay equity law. They're trying to uh, add one more year to that and they're asking for uh, Deschutes County to help support them. And they think we've, or I don't know where they got the information, but they say we use that process uh, ourselves, so. We do utilize that um, for both 911 and health positions specifically. Um, it, it's, it's kind of important to have that if we're going to bring any type of other bonuses in. So in conjunction with the 4004 bill that Janice was referring to, I mean, it's a component, otherwise it is considered part of compensation and, and bonuses cause all sorts of issues with pay equity reviews. So it's almost a necessary factor um, if we're gonna consider 4004. Thank you, Kathleen. Yeah. So it sounds like we should support that as well in, in conjunction with, if, if we're supporting 4004. I agree. Okay. Mr. My only thought is, uh, remember, these are the, the public jobs, people doing great work for the community, but it's gonna be this escalation out there for wages and the inflation is already shocking. So the more government provides these, uh, you know, uh, funding compensation commitments, the, the harder it's gonna push it, just in the whole market is, is what I'm referring to. Yeah, I mean, but are, we, but are we pushing things up or are we trying to keep up so that, you know, we don't, we don't miss out on workers? I mean, it's, because, you know, we're, 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 one, we're one employer, we're a decent size employer, but we're one employer in, a, in this bigger economy and wages and bonuses and all those things are, are increasing all around us. So, I mean, I, I, we, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to drive that, but I mean, we don't want to be left behind either. So well, for, go ahead, Janice. No, just for behavioral health, I think just operationally outside of the, um, larger considerations. Operationally, there was a large investment in behavioral health last legislative session, and we're struggling to deliver on that investment because we can't hire staff. So we're just in a bind. And um, these bills really do help us recruit actively and bring staff into public settings. Obviously, my investment in that is that it's often our public entity providers who serve folks that other people in the community won't serve. So on down the track, if we can't get staff, we can't serve folks that won't get served elsewhere. So this is, this is why we hope, uh, this is why AOC MHP is advocating for passage of the bill and why we prioritized it for our commissioners consideration. Okay, so is that a one is four? And Commissioner Devon, were you not particularly? Oh no, I'm not against it. I'm just laying out the you know the big picture from my point of view. So yeah, we can support this. Well, yes, because tomorrow the inflation number is going to come in, and it, I mean when Wells Fargo is starting tellers at twenty bucks an hour, you know inflation is going to be way up there. So yeah, I mean people are really we know going backwards when you know what inflation is. So, okay, so we're good with that. I will let them know immediately. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. So is there somebody else that's got their hand up? So if, if nobody else has their hand up, Nahad um, had raised one uh, to, to, to me earlier this morning, maybe to Eric and Tom. I think Coon. Tom Tom Kuhn might be able to address it. Okay, good. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure because Nahad, it was important to Nahad to raise it. House Bill 4052, which had a hearing earlier in the week, and I see is scheduled for a work session on Friday. So, Tom, are you able to, to talk about that? Yeah, I can. Uh, so, uh, Nahad wasn't able to stay on the call. He's, as uh, Nick alluded, he's very interested in this bill. It's basically a, a continuation of the bill that was uh, going on during the last session. Uh, they uh, have two major provisions in it. One is that uh, Oregon Health Authority provide grants to operate two culturally and linguistically 
specific mobile units. Uh, that was in the last session, there was some issues with that because they said that they were going to have um, Oregon Health Authority or local public health operate those mobile units. And we felt it was better that that be made available to all different types of organizations. So that language has been changed. So that's the one uh, pr major provision. The second one is to develop recommendations on how to fund robust culturally and linguistically specific interventions programs designed to prevent or intervene in health conditions that result in, in inequitable and negative outcomes. So that's another thing is developing um, and analyzing some data and coming up with some ways that we can um, use that information to help uh, combat racism and inequities in health. And so those are the major provisions of this bill. Um, it, it did just have a, a public hearing and then a work session is scheduled on um, Friday. But I don't, and I'm a little rusty, we don't provide any testimony at a work session, correct? It's just public hearings only. I didn't know if written testimony can be submitted. I believe written testimony can be submitted until it's voted on, but uh, in a work session, generally there's not any testimony at all. Yeah. And if you there is, it's invited and you would know Okay. So anyways, I think that summarizes uh, that bill and uh, we're recommending a priority to support. And that's what it says on our chart. Yes. Actually, um, Nahad uh, called this morning and requested that we amend that to a recommendation of a priority one support. Um, so just, I think Phil likely ran the report prior to, to him requesting that update so the board's aware. What's the bill number? 4052 HB. And uh, not to interrupt the discussion on this item, but Ryan, I wanted to just circle back and say that yesterday the AOC Legislative Committee um, supported HB 4004. So AOC as a whole, with Deschutes County as a, as a voting member, supported that, that, that bill. Excellent. Yeah, Alex from uh, Lane County was just wanting to um, use the Deschutes County logo on the one pager for it. And on uh, the current the current piece of legislation we're talking about, uh, I would support either a a, a position, uh, priority one or priority two support um, stance on that. I'd be, we do have, you know, we, we see it in COVID, we see it in uh, behavioral health and other places. We have, um, we have disparities in our community, uh, you know, based on race, language, and culture uh, in health outcomes, and this could help us uh, address some of those. No comment. So I believe we can leave it, what, as a one today, and then we'll see if it continues to go ahead. Well, a one says we send all of our resources in there to make sure this is the most highest priority. So I don't, I don't support changing it to a one. Okay, you wanna leave it at a two then. Yeah, I'm happy to leave it at the two. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if there's any other staff that would like to flag a potential priority one or two for the board for discussion today. Nope. Okay. And Commissioner Adair, before our next update, we'll go through and uh, do a search for any, any pending reviews and delete them out of the system so we don't run into this technical hiccup the next time around. I apologize for that, but we're uh, it's a valuable tool, but we have to kind of harness it in the best way possible. So we'll continue to work on that. I know it's never easy. No, nope. thank, thank you, Whitney. 
Um, okay, so thank you everyone. When is our next meeting then? Just to remind everyone. I believe that is next Tuesday as well at the same time, the 15th. Okay, the day after Valentine's Day. Okay, perfect. And um, okay, we'll be good. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.